and she loves surprises. <laughs> So now is the time in our worship when we are going to celebrate the Lord's Supper. Uh, it's a time of mourning because Jesus obviously gave his life and suffered and did all those things. But it's a celebration too, isn't it? We celebrate, we're remembering a risen Savior. Someone who is alive now, but is also active in our lives. He intercedes in our prayers. He continually forgives us when we have the right heart. Um, and so as we meet together and participate in the Lord's Supper, there are so many good reasons why we do this. Number one, Jesus asked us to do it. That's a pretty good reason. But as we take it together and we become unified, as we share in these elements, we become one. We acknowledge the unity we have in Christ. It's a, there's nothing like it. When you are in Christ, there's nothing else that compares in the world. We're also, in a sense, preaching the gospel. When we take these emblems, we're saying we believe in these things that the emblems represent. We believe who Christ is and was. We believe that he was God, came down, became incarnate, put on flesh, was tempted like we are tempted, have weaknesses like we have, and yet lived a perfect life. Had amazing teaching. And, of course, proclaimed the gospel, was willing to give his life so that we could be saved, that we could be made holy. When we take the bread and the grape juice, we're saying that we believe these things. We're saying that he was crucified. He suffered that horrible death willingly. He left his place in heaven to do that for us. We're saying that he was killed in an unjust manner. He was buried, and that he rose again. That's what we're saying. Non-verbally, when we're here, you don't have to say anything. Because I see that you're here, I know you believe that. I know that you're saying that. Same with the people on Zoom. They can see each other. I'll just read in 1 Corinthians 11, verse we often read. Uh, verse 23, before we take the emblems. First Corinthians 11. Pretty quick. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had been given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, for which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. But when you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So let's just pray before we partake of the bread. Heavenly Father, we are here this morning to honor and praise you. We're here to remember the things that need remembering in terms of your glory, in terms of your resurrection. And as we stand here and participate in this, we are proclaiming the gospel, Father, that we believe in these things and that others around us might see that, that might not be Christians, that children might see what we're doing. So, Father, we're very thankful for the blessing you give us, and now we partake of this bread. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let's share together in the fruit of the vine. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we uh, partake of this uh, fruit of the vine. We uh, acknowledge that um, the blood of Christ uh, was given freely through the suffering that he did, the horrible things he sustained, and that we believe that um, he is resurrected, that he is the one true Savior, and that we can lie on his promises. We now partake of this uh, fruit of the vine. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.